e4. Well, it's time for c5. Next move, e6. Against the bishop, we're ready with a6. d4. When the recapture is with a piece, always, always take it. The next move is always the knight. Surprisingly, the next move is the queen, even though it allows a knight to harass us. We just take a step back. Surprisingly, I'm almost at a thousand elo, and I've never seen a player play knight b5, which is baffling to me. Because when I studied the Taimanov at my level, like just before GM, this was not only the main thing that I studied, but the main thing people were playing against me. It's it's reasonably tricky. <laughs> okay, queen d2. We haven't seen this line much where uh, black intends to castle. So in this one, usually I like to throw the knight out quickly. Not only is knight g4 kind of nice, but the pressure on the e-pawn. So we like to force our opponent to do that. There are ways to play bishop b4 in this line, but I'm going to go with the more modest uh, bishop e7. And while there are many, many options here, I have to be honest, one that I really like is h5. And it looks really weird, but my plan is still very similar. But white has a plan, which is g4. And if I go here and here, white will do this plan where he goes g4, g5, boots my knight, and just kind of uh, asks it a, a, an awkward question early on in the game. Where does it want to go? Putting that out on h5, it is okay, but it can it can leave a weird impression. Okay, first of all, if I take here, queen takes, I'm not winning that bishop or anything, so I'm going to go like that. So the reason I'm doing h5 is it totally stops white's counterplay with g4, and it, it slows it down. If h3, I'll go h4. So I'm doing these things because I want to slow down white's moves. Not because I'm fully preventing them, but that one h5 move, suddenly white is like wondering, wait, wait what the hell am I even doing in this game? <laughs> so I've had some, I've enjoyed the move uh, h5 a little bit. Okay, f4, we have the g4 square, which is, you know, obviously a big, a big square that's opened up. But of course, uh, over here, knight to c4 also makes a lot of sense. And keeping in mind, quite importantly, that when your knight gets attacked, you want to have a square for it at all times. If your knight has to go back to g8, you have messed the opening up. Period. The knight should not have to go there. So either your pawn should be on d6 to cover e5, and I say d6 covering e5, even though e5 is sometimes playable, your knight always has the d7 square. Um, but your knight should be able to move somewhere good, like g4, reasonable, d5, also fine. So now the king moves, b4 looks very tempting because the uh, knight will have to move, and then e4 drops. Only thing I'm thinking about is b4, knight a4, Knight takes, and knight b6 is threatened, but I think we can cover it. Because that attacks the queen. So we could do rook b8 next, for example. Knight e2 would be a significantly worse move, but uh, yeah, my next move would have just been something like bishop b7. The pawn moved up, we could jump into e4, d5. Bishop's going here, and... For example, this queen move, I don't mind capturing at all. On takes, I'll just move the knight right back. Rook takes, I don't think we need to do anything special at all. This pawn is defended. I've got the two bishops. I'm up a pawn. Center pawn. He's having a long think here. It's very unpleasant to play against the uh, the bishops, that's for sure. Knight c5 here is, uh, is a move. I think after this, I can actually just take it. Slap our bishop on e4 and call it a day.
Pressure on C2. He's going to resign there. So there's probably a lot to uh, to talk about in this game. Because we, number one, we haven't seen this line before. But also, I think uh, our opponent played quite well. So I definitely want to... <laughs> I want to hand them their credit there. Like, my opponent resigned in a position where I was up only a couple pawns, by the way. So it wasn't even too crazy. I think he could feel he was being outplayed. Um, fair play to him. But. We finally got to see this queen d2 move. So usually when white does things like a3, bishop e2, bishop d3, like whatever. We pretty much go b5, bishop b7, knight takes, we take with a queen, rook c8, you know, these pieces there, and castle, right? Queen d2 indicates white's planning to do that. And although you can still do these moves, like they're not big mistakes, um, I think it's a little more accurate to first start with the knight. So you can think of it this way, like without white castling this way, so when white goes kingside, your queen side pieces are the priority. When white castles queen side, your king side pieces are the priority. I don't think I have ever explained it that way until this second when I just noticed the parallels, but that's maybe an easy way to remember it. Um, knight f6. If they don't play f3 and they play castle, for example, I'm already a little more interested in moves like knight g4. I don't think I would play just the second. I would probably do this. But the fact that this is threatened is going to be very valuable at some point. Knight g4 is just, it's not a move you want to leave lingering there as white. It will be valuable for black at some point. And God forbid I ever, ever take that uh, bishop for my knight. Then black is just significantly better all the time. So f3 will almost always get played. Bishop e7, castle. And so here b5 and bishop b7 is basically my plan. Um... This is a very, very normal way to play. B5 is basically the best move here. So I want to remind you that when you're playing against this, you still go for the same plan. It, you just get these pieces out first. So you still go for something like this. One thing that's really important is uh, knight takes on um, c6, queen takes on c6. And then if people play e5, I've already mentioned to you a few things. If your knight has to go back, you have fucked up. So, if I'm telling you that this position on the board is good for black, but I'm also telling you that if you play knight g8, you've made a mistake, what is black supposed to do here? Anyone? You have to trust that everything I've told you is true so far. Knight h5 will get you in trouble after g4, although it might look like queen f3 is playable. You get smacked in the face with either one of those bishop moves. Knight d5 takes, and you just lose a pawn. But even if you didn't lose a pawn, it'd be a double isolated pawn. Just disgusting. So definitely not knight d5. Remember, I said if we can play the knight here or here safely, we want to. If we go back, that's a really, really bad thing. Definitely not knight d5. This pawn structure is an example of a pawn structure that you never ever get in the time on off. Like never straight up ever will e takes d5 be a good move here. b4. Yes, b4. This is a like monumentally important concept to remember in the time on off. When they castle, they're always running into this because it's check. b4 frees up the d5 square for your own knight. So if they take, then you take here, and white's in trouble. If they take any of this, obviously you win the queen with check. And the check's important, because otherwise they would take here. If the king was on b1, lose your queen, but you get screwed here because you lose your rook and they get a new queen. So you take, they'd have to answer back, but then you can just trade queens and take here and you're laughing, right? Put your bishop on c6, castle, you're already hitting the pawn. Killer for black. Um, so white will naturally want to move the knight. But once they move the knight, then you get 
the square that I told you you're always supposed to be able to get. If you have to move the knight to g8, you messed up. Knight d5. The knight is gorgeous here. It cannot be evicted by the c pawn because you've got this pawn ready to always take on passant. Not to mention it's hanging, but you get what I mean. You're ready to take the bishop. Your knight will be supported by your bishop in just a sec. Your rook goes to c8. This is like a plus position. Black's better here. So you want to remember things like e5, b4. And things like this are going to be true in general in this opening. But specifically, or 90% of the time, it's when people castle long. Because when they castle this way, you're not going to have a check. So you might get into some trouble here. So very important concept to remember. But this is me mentioning that b5 might be like the best move here. The move that I played in the game, which I'm kind of a fan of, is the move h5. And the reason that I played h5 is even though it might not be the best move, I've had a lot of success with it because it prevents the move g4. So if we had done our move and white had not gone there and played g4, sometimes I find these positions just a little bit uncomfortable. White goes like total pawn storm here. Uh, your knight has to like reposition. It's a fine position for black, but it's good for white. Can't sugarcoat it. So I've had a lot more success with the move h5 because white's sitting there going, okay, I don't really have anything in the center. I'm obviously not playing on the queen side. And now all my king side stuff is just slower than usual. So I've been enjoying this move. Um, you can experiment with h5, with b5, you know, see how they feel to you. But um, yeah, the ideas are the same. When they castle queen side, you prioritize the king side development and maybe halting their plans. And then you go back to the same old Taimanov stuff. When they castle king side, you usually start with the queen side stuff and then get your king side pieces out. Let's kind of develop on the side that's opposite the way that they're planning to castle for the most part. Um, and if they had played e5 here, although knight d5 is possible, you guys should be familiar with the theme now. E5, yes, I could play knight D5 and it would be an okay move. But what's better than okay? B4. Takes takes is just crushing for me. If the knight moves, not only do I have knight E4, knight D5, but I also have queen takes A2, which just happens to be threatening a mate here. Uh, but the point is that I get the D5 square. So B4 is really important as a counter-attacking move to E5. You'll see that a lot. And then here, obviously, we used it because it just straight up won a pawn. And okay, the rest is relatively easy in the sense that we won a center pawn, two bishops. We we have a light squared bishop. It should be uh should be good from here. Let's keep going. Hopefully that made some sense. I know it's a lot to take in. If you want cliff notes or you want some advice on what to remember from my 10-minute rant here, it would be. Queenside castling, kingside pieces, kingside castling, queenside pieces in terms of development. And when white plays e5, have a lookout and calculate b4 as a counterattacking move enables your knight to claim a central square instead of retreating. You never want to retreat your knight and you never want to double your pawns in the center. Ever. There you go. Those are the cliff notes. Okay, e4, another Sicilian. Okay, haven't seen b3, I don't think, so far. Um, so if we stick with our moves, let's say e3, these would be the... Uh, these would be the moves. f4. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll be honest with you. I see f4, and my first thought is like d5, but... Just kind of a rule I have is like, play a6 to stop bishop b5. That's always one of the things I think, because bishop b5 and doubling our pawns is just such an easy way to play sometimes, so. Because now you look at the bishop and it's like, you look at the squares it has available, none of them are too interesting, if I'm being honest.
Okay, maybe target this pawn with a little attack. I also like d4 as a, a move in general uh, because it it'll cut the bishop off. So I'm considering a move like d4 next. Yes, rook e8. Now, can he play that move? It's going to be a bit of a messy position here, isn't it? This will be a messy one. Because I am thinking about knight e4, but after queen takes on <laughs> g7, <laughs> I'm wondering what's happening there. <laughs> so this is going to be crazy, but I'm going to do it. I mean, first of all, playing this move is nuts. So shout out to him for just like, if he plays it, just shout out to him. Um, but I think the resulting position is, is still kind of interesting. I mean, this is an 800, right? Shout out to him. So I was thinking of two things. Queen f6, takes, takes. But really what I was I was actually spending my time on was knight f6, odd looking move, taking here, and just turning the game into a complete mess. And it's like, it's a mess. Am I doing well? Not too sure, but I'll be impressed if uh, be impressed if my chum over here can keep up. Most important move that I'm about to play is the move d4. That kills the diagonal and really, yeah. So that blocking that diagonal was the most valuable thing that that I could have done in the position. And now bishop g4 will also win the knight. I think we'll slowly, slowly bring this one home. Everything's hanging now and yeah, I mean it, it just <laughs> went downhill quickly, but um, it's a funny looking position. I'm playing an 800 and I'm actually having a moment where I'm like, huh, <laughs> good calculation, Amon. <laughs> pat, pat on the back there, bud. Way to go. You really handled him. 94, not only is black better here, but queen takes g7, knight takes c6. The only move for black here is knight f6. Um, otherwise, it's around equal, but knight f6. Takes, takes. And knight c3, rook d2, and it's minus 3, which is basically up a piece because this guy is going to die. I'm about to play rook c2 and be completely winning. d4 is happening, and the knight's trapped. So, <laughs> didn't think I'd have to <laughs> bring out the old calculation skills, but queen g7 was a hell of a move. Um... Surprisingly, black has a pretty significant advantage here, even though it might not feel like it. But definitely the way I like to play against this bishop is I know for a fact that if I play d5 here, white would love to play a move like this, sometimes even at the cost of a pawn. They would like get it back later or something. But just get, getting rid of this bishop, white wants to do this, then play d3, get rid of the bishop, and then castle. So, just because I'm familiar with how white likes to play these, I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> We're going a6. Not letting him trade the bishop, and then go from there. Another e4 game. We're getting spoiled with all these Sicilians. Oh, bishop c4 alert. We should know how to handle this now. Starting with e6, and interesting to see the move a4, because I'll be honest, 
We don't see it too much, not gonna lie. Because I see A4 before, like before even a knight shows up, yes, I am gonna play D5 here. I could play A6, but I actually don't need to play A6 because I already have the information that B5 is not possible. He should wait for me to play A6 and then play A4. He didn't have to play this. So I'm gonna use that information to my advantage and not even waste my time with A6, right? If he wanted to do this check, he didn't need his pawn there. You know what I mean? So I, f I would say objectively, it's a little wasteful. This, uh, this A4 business, it's gonna take, take back. And we just want knights out. I'm gonna mirror the knight here so that knight E5 is covered. C4 does not look too impressive on its own. Let's just get another piece out and not make more pawn moves. Knight before is at least gonna create some threats. Castling gets out of all of them, but still a great place for this knight to be. Ooh, that's not castling. This is castling. Rook e8, rook d8, and it's almost like he wants to copy my knight before move, but it doesn't work like that. This knight is doing a whole heck of a lot of nothing. Rook to the e-file. Yeah, and now, now I have a feeling we might be seeing uh, some nasty maneuvers incoming. This king is looking very mated if we ever get a queen to show up on b3. Bishop f6, also uh, super tempting, but I'm going to try to combine a few things. We'll start with a6. Hmm. So, queen takes here will actually be checkmate. Meaning, all I need to do is move this knight. But funny enough, if I move it here, it's the one place where b3 is actually covered by his knight. So, a little, uh, a little unlucky. I think I'm gonna just go like this. Queen c4, I'll play knight a5 gonna go back there I think it's time to move this knight Queen takes a4 knight b3 suppose I could start like this rook e8 next of course not pre-moving it because you never know what moves are gonna get played here As Yasser likes to say, check to the miserable king. And we should be able to complete uh, this king hunt with just checks so that we don't allow him uh, a chance to... So, funny enough, even though we're pretty much in the center of the board, I'm actually just going to use the ladder. Like, you, you almost never get to use this technique just in the, in the middle game face of the game. Yeah, it's just the ladder, you know. Very familiar technique. Neil's called for a KO. Everyone, KO's out. Neil has signaled KO. Shall be. It shall be. So this was a, uh, I mean, I can't take this opening seriously. The reason we're playing d5 here is like, if white plays like this, yes, I can play d5, but if I play d5, takes, takes, bishop b5, it would be the same line that we just played, except white would be able to do everything one move faster because he wouldn't have wasted time with a4. a4 was unnecessary. So that's why I would play a6 here. And then a4 would make sense, and then I would play d5. But the way my opponent did it is he started with a4. So it's almost like I'm not even going to bother playing a6 because what am I even threatening, you know? There's no point for me to do this anymore. I'll just start with d5. 
And it's like, you're just wasting your time here. What's this garbage? I'm trying to think. And we could be... We could risk ruining your understanding of this concept forever with this analogy. But imagine you're uh, bargaining or bartering, you know? You're trying to bargain a price down. And it's like, if you're at $20 and I'm at $10, basically, you don't want to go from 20 all the way down to, let's say, $11. Because then what I might have offered you next, which might have been $13, I'm not even going to bother offering. As soon as you go down to $11, I'm going to be like, okay, <laughs> not going to bother offer 13 anymore. So I think of this move as like showing your cards too early. It's like he's doing this, expecting me to still offer this. Doesn't make any sense. Dude, you're way ahead of schedule. Think of it like a little uh, bargaining chip. I play this to do that, you say no. That's how those moves happen. You can't jump the gun like this. All of a sudden, I'm going to realize it's not even worth playing A6 anymore. I don't need to waste that card anymore. Thomas. Always an E4 guy. Which one is it going to be, though? Knight F3? We're ready to capture on D4, but we actually see the very same idea that we just discussed. So, like I said, C3, when people do this move, they're trying to play D4. Your Sicilian will look like shit if you just play it normally, like this. It will look so bad, D4, and you'll be like lost. I promise you, your pieces will be in the worst positions to handle that. You must attack E4, you must. You have the added benefit of Knight here threatening the pawn, and a lot of people think because I've taught this before, that you can leave the pawn hanging and win the piece with a check. So, like I've taught people that, but I've taught people that against not this opening because it's not check. <laughs> so we're using me against myself. D3, okay. He's covered it, which means we can continue for the most part. I think knight c6, d5. At this point, we've done our part. We've stopped him from playing the move um, d4, which is thumbs up for us. It should be three does not look like the best move for d5. Knight d2 is really asking for it here with, uh, with d4. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little bit tempted. We're gonna restrain ourselves for the moment and just play slow. Taking, I'm not sure about. I'll take with a knight and I want your dark squared bishop. Queen here. I'm getting long castle vibes. I'm not sure if uh, those are gonna materialize. Okay. Quick little run through here. If we take the bishop, the pawn will take back. And then white will have this nice little pawn chain. So first things first, I'm going to take here. So now if the knight takes, then we'll take the bishop. Because now taking with the pawn doesn't make that much sense. Now I know he can take with the queen. But the point is I didn't want to see those pawns all connect to one another. Here, bishop c5 exists. But I'm keeping it so simple. It's... We're taking, we're giving him an isolated pawn, we're calling it a day. Check. Massive move. The game is over. <laughs> he has to move his king. It's actually annoying, because um, king e2 blocks his bishop, so it is more annoying than you think. I will tell you that. Bishop c5, technically, best move in the position. Are we a best move? kind of player yes we are oh my yasser is here that's why i was compelled to play bishop c5 I could feel my my hand started just like gravitating playing bishop c5 i might have played something else but 
so I knew something felt weird. That explains everything. I would have played bishop d7. I, I swear. Jack. We're going to trade the rooks. We're going to bring our bishop here. And bring our king. I suppose this is not most unusual, but let's bring the king. King to the center. Don't, don't Bobby Fisher it. Don't, oh, don't do it. Don't do it. Who the hell do you think you are? No, no, we have to make him pay. We have to make him pay. No, 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 no. H4, oh, buddy. No, no. Bishop h7, h4. Who the hell do you think you are? Nasty. Nasty. <laughs> I mean, Bishop h7. So unnecessary. He just couldn't help himself. You know what? I think that Thomas also knew that Yasser was here. So, I could actually say thank you, Yasser, because your presence not only won me a pawn, but it also for sure caused my opponent to do that. There's no other explanation for why Bishop H7 would be played. So we have to thank Yasser on both sides of the coin here. Couldn't have done it without him. Oh, diggy. E4, the ever popular move. E6, Taimanov. C3, we're going knight f6. D4, we're taking. And it's knight c6 before a6. It's also queen c7 before a6. Bishop there. People leaving their bishop here, by the way, like this is a blunder waiting to happen, but all I can tell you because this has agonized me over my entire chess career. The bishop, there's no tactic to win the bishop. It does not exist. You, you feel like it exists, but it doesn't exist. And you sit there and you calculate and you agonize, it doesn't exist. It never does, it's so frustrating. It's like people leave the bishop there, bad things should be happening, but they just never do. Just don't materialize. Boy, is it frustrating. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. C4. I, I am in shock. It's like he wants the bishop on this suspicious square more than life itself. Like, I can't explain it. He's, he's so interested in having the piece there. I think I'm going to play b4 out of respect. It's like, no. I don't know. You've earned my respect. Taking and bishop b7 look very good. Look <laughs> very good. But, look, you got it, pal. You got it. We're going to keep it. Real friendly vibes here. E5. I can't say that's the move, my friend. I can't say that's it. There's a whole heck of a lot of knight g4 headed your way. Oof. Remember how important I've been mentioning it is to get that dark square bishop? <laughs> and I tell you, if you get it and you win the exchange in the process, clap, clap, clap. I mean, this is just a massacre now. The most important piece, and you're telling me I get it for free? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're too kind. I get bishop c5 as well? Oh, no, no, no. Please, please. You must be, uh... You must be kidding. You can't possibly be this good. 
There's a... <sighs> yeah, sir, you, surely you would agree there's only one move here, right? We, ha we have to play. It's, it's mandatory. This move, also mandatory. He plays queen g4, I tip my hat. Check. Let's just throw a check. This looks like we can put him in a nice little box here. This looks enjoyable. People are going to have a good time watching this game. He's not. Sorry. I meant everyone except him. He's not going to have a good time. Nope. Not him, but everyone except him. Like everyone here. Queen here. Now we'll pull the old, like, oops, I'm not actually winning your rook trick. Oh, damn, I should have won his rook. Shoot. <laughs> rook h1. Get him out of here. We had to make a make a point there. No, but this was a when it rains it pours type of position. You know, interesting stuff, reasonable, reasonable. But then e5, what the hell? Super hang. F4. Knight g4 to win the dark square bishop in this opening is killer. Like at this point, white's dead because I'm gonna take the bishop regardless. So like you do this, okay. I'm taking this bishop. I might start with bishop c5, but the point is the bishop is gone. Only retreating square is here, it's also gonna be taken. And I'm just going here, here, like so much pressure. Nasty already. Okay. C4 with the white pieces, and we do get E5 moves. So now we have the uh, reverse Sicilian, Bishop C5. I mean, how friendly can someone be? <laughs> right? They're heading right out there. I say thank you very much, boy. B4 in stride. There comes the bishop. All our pieces getting developed. You want my queen? See ya. Okay. Decision time. Don't mind playing this, but kind of interested in perhaps playing a little more aggressive. Bishop b2 is a very good option. The one I would uh, fall back on here, but I think I'm gonna go knight f3. Inviting this move. Okay, it doesn't end up taking it. So <laughs> we'll, we'll chill out again and, and go here. Right? We'll chill out again, right? Right? Surely we will. Okay. G4, knight f5, bishop here I'll take it. Thought we were gonna chill out. Well, I can't help it. My pieces look so attractive aimed at the king there. Okay, high energy move. Let's attack this. Take that. We got this guy falling, but before I do, G5 is looking like a snack. I mean, takes here is good, but G5 is looking like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Yes, there's bishop takes, so I'm gonna defend it before I go hunting for this pawn. This pawn's dead. I don't need to worry about it. 
But now none of his pieces can access F F6. It's uh it's actually really nasty here. G5 H4 and oof. Do not envy him here. Because there's no supporting the pawn with another pawn. Rook to f5. We'll start by hitting him with this. But to be honest with you, if he plays queen here, I don't I don't think I want to take it. F4 to hit the rook. I am attacking the rook, but my bishops I actually like more than the rook, so I'm not sure I want to take it. Like he goes here and what I'm considering is something like this. It actually allows this momentarily, but I think we can get away with that. So, oh, okay. Could have played that. It wouldn't have really worked. We have queen e6 here. But I'm, you know, I'm getting thirsty for more than just queen e6 and winning the knight on d7. Where's my mate? Where's my mate? Maybe we'll just take it outright. This guy's hanging now. Okay, what's the big idea here? I don't really want to let his knight into g3. Eh. We always have a, a check if needed. Rook's attacked. I'm <laughs> honestly not sure if... Uh, if I should even react to it, but okay. We'll force you to take my uh, my rook. It's almost like the most annoying thing in the position was his knight. So what better way to trade it off than to force him to win material? Poor thing. Are we going for the, well, we have to just do this. This is just pretty looking. We have all eight pawns on the board. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> this, this doesn't happen very often. Don't take it. Don't do it. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to trade some of these. GG. Just a picturesque set of pawns there. What was that? Connect at least five. At least connect five here. Oh, we're... We're gonna have to deny people of their own four-digit success in order to get closer. Well, against E6, truly, truly difficult to do much here in the Sicilian because it's just not the Sicilian, right? Oh. No d5 though, there's hope, there's hope. There is hope. Okay, the reason I've been holding off on castling is because I see a knight here and this opening that we're playing, this setup, it really lends itself to an attack because your pieces are naturally pointed in that direction. 
So attack we shall. Oof, we got we got moves looking real tempting here. Real tempting. Knight g5. Um Let's threaten this. Also, don't mind trading those at all. Ooh, that is a surprising move. Now I will probably hop the knight in. Not winning anything outright, unless he blunders that, but could have just played queen d7. But I would have expected h takes, um, each takes g6 there. I mean, this is just a murderous, uh, murderous move. Queen d7 should probably happen. This looks like a, he's not at the computer angle. <laughs> this is giving like Homer Simpson moving back into the bushes. Something tells me our dear friend may not return. I think he's filing the report right now as we speak. I mean, it, it does look like a compelling report. Not gonna lie. One by resignation. So he was there the whole time. I bet people are wondering what the hell happened here, though. <laughs> I bet people are wondering. Like, why the hell is he moving a pawn and then a piece and then a pawn and then a piece? What the flying fuck? What's this guy up to? Could be two more. You gotta beat a 1,000 to be a 1,000. And what better opening than the time on off to do it? Bishop c4. Get that garbage out of here. A6. B5. Get this trash out of here. Wasting his time. Look, and now he's blocking the bishop in anyway. If we go here, we may have to deal with e5. We've talked about how we don't like that. So I'll just play d6 to help me play knight f6 comfortably. A3 doesn't really stop that move, so I'm just gonna kind of ignore it for the moment. Get our pieces uh, developed here. You can imagine I see this move and I immediately just go, okay, you know? <laughs> so what? Rook C8, I like. These are all of our Taimanov moves, with the exception of d6, because white played f4, so e5 is just a little bit 
more annoying than uh, than usual, which is why we did that. Um, okay. Now, d5, super tempting. Knight g4, also tempting, I have to say. Although the bishop does retreat, I think he should be okay there. I'm going to go d5. So, he should either play d4 or maybe move the bishop. Um, I think that one makes the most sense, but bishop f2. Extremely, extremely reasonable. Let's go like this. Opens our bishop. Yes, there's a hanging pawn here, but I was actually uh, not sure we want to take that just yet. So first, I'll start by attacking the knight. Now I can take it. But... I would also play some other moves. So just... Yeah, I, th I, think it's, uh, I think it's about time. I think it's about time. Take the pawn or you're going to tell Yasser. <laughs> Just started with that. I think a little check here. Don't mind if I do. Castle. I'm actually... Uh, actually thinking about just going... Knight into one of these squares. I want to replace my queen with the knight, essentially. The, the knight can do more than the queen. So let's bring the queen back. Yes, it looks like, you know, oh, scary. But to be honest, the only move is bishop there. So it's not that frightening. Ooh, that's a strange move. You're not losing, but you're kind of losing. <laughs> Open up that bishop. Bishop g5 looks kind of nice. Takes. So we should probably start by taking check. We're still not winning or anything just yet. We'll take back here. Um... I think we take with the, we go here to threaten that. And if rook takes e3, I think we can take with the pawn. And then we'll still have queen h2 at the end. Plus the knight will be hanging. But still, this move is important. Because that is a massive threat. And this stops queen h2 because it pins it. GG. King takes, knight takes, rook takes. About equal.